Hey friends, hope you're doing well. In this video, I'd like to explore with you the new structured output from OpenAI API and why this is such a big thing. Now, AI has the potential to disrupt billion dollar industries, right? Because many processes which are done manually today and also provided by companies can be automated, completely automated by AI. Now, uh, one of the biggest steps towards this is the use of AI agents. Now, what is an AI agent? Well, if you don't know, um, uh, a short explanation is you can see it right here. You can also Google it if you want. But the idea is that we do not only have our large language model, but we also provide it with additional functionalities, meaning we provide it with some tools, for instance, that could be some Python functions, like in this example. And we might also provide it with a knowledge base, uh, which could be a vector store. And then based on this additional uh, tools and data the LLM has, it can, it can do processes automatically. It's not like I ask a question and get a result back and then ask the next question, but instead we ask a question to do something and then the agent can do several steps and deliver results. So it's much more complex. Um, for instance, it could enter data into a database for us, uh, like customer data when a customer orders uh, something from our store. This, for instance, and other kinds of tools, right? It could go to my email um, account. It could uh, then read all the emails and get me the latest important news which I need to address. For instance, customer inquiries, anything else, like right? these things. So um, that's about agents. However, there is a one big flaw regarding agents. And this is, or one complexity, and this is that an agent, in order to work properly, right, needs to have some kind of specific output and input which you can use. So both of this is important. So I'm just meaning, think about if you want an um, automatic process, like in this case an agent, to enter a specific data, for instance, into a database. Then, of course, the data uh, which the agent receives needs to be in a specific format. And this is one of the crucial aspects which is often a problem, because um, if you ask, for instance, uh, Claude Sonnet, right, or if you ask ChatGPT, then what you get back oftentimes is some kind of text. And for us humans, that's totally fine, right? There stands the, the customer name is this one and he ordered this one and so on and so on, right? This information is uh, totally fine for us, but the agent needs to have it in a structured format. So we need to make sure that the data the agent receives is always coming in a specific format. And this needs to be deterministic. And that is a problem because uh, a large language model, of course, normally um, is some kind of generating uh, output based on probabilities. So we do not get always the same uh, data back, right? The same answer to our question. You will also realize this if you try it yourself, right? Then you get uh, maybe the same uh, kind of meaning, but you will never get exactly the same output. So uh, how do we make sure that the data we receive, or the, in this case, the agent, we get the, uh, the data the agent receives, is always in a specific format. And uh, the best format oftentimes is JSON format. Now, there are various ways, and for instance, the framework Langchain has created some specific um, output parsers in order to make sure that this uh, works. But now, there's a new and, from my point of view, better feature, which is coming from OpenAI API directly. And this is what they uh, described here in this new blog post to um, structured, in this case, outputs. Now, we can see here, there's an example, and currently it's still in beta. That's why you can see it here. It's beta.chapter regions, and then .parse, that's the method. And they also provide a little example here. So uh, you can read through the blog post if you want, but um, I can also show it to you. So I just copy this example and then paste it in my VS code in here. And there it is. And the idea behind it is that it works with Pydantic models. So Pydantic in Python allows us to, well, make sure and validate that the data we get back is in a specific format. And this is a really a huge um, step forward because this allows them to always receive a specific format and make sure that the model gives us exactly the format which we can then post or give into the agent and the agent can do then additional steps. Like for instance, then writing this in a database, for instance, anything like that. Right? And this uh, deterministic behavior that you always get the same uh, data in a structured output format like JSON, for instance, allows us then to do huge and a lot of more things with our agents. And we will receive lots uh, or less errors. So um, long story short, how does it work? Well, as I said, I just copied the example uh, from OpenAI in this case, so I can show it to you. And the idea is that we have in our base model here, um, this case, this base model, this class here, and this class is our validator. So this class makes sure we have a calendar event here, and the calendar event always needs to receive here a name, a date, and a list of participants. So this is what we want to expect based on the user input, right? It's like, think of a customer orders, for instance, 
here um, some kind of uh, event and we are an event manager, right? And then the customer tells us, of course, um, they're the name of the customer, then when the event should take place and then the participants, for instance, uh, the person uh, or the people who uh, take part in this event. So for instance, if we need to provide some kind of uh, food for the event and so on, then we know exactly who is coming. Uh, just an example, right? Um, so this is uh, basically the class and this is what we want the model to output. So exactly in this structured format. And then we just uh, call the API. So in this case, OpenAI API, just in case uh, you don't know that, you need to have uh, an API key for that. So you can register and then, uh, well, uh, give or pay $5 and they can use it for quite some time. And um, then we can call this beta. So instead of chat completion, we call beta chat completion and then dot parse. This is a new method. Now, then we specify the model and GPT for all. In this case, this is the newest model, but you can also use a cheaper one like the mini model, for instance. And uh, let me just do that for here. So just replace uh, this part here. So let me go in here and just replace it with, in this case, a mini. So that should work actually. So because this model is cheaper, so we can also give it a try with this one. And then the messages, right? The messages just enroll the system and then extract the event information. That's just a question here, or basically the, the priming of the model. And then more interesting here, the user, and then there's a content. And then you can see here, Alice and Bob are going to the science fair on Friday. So what you can see here in this text is that there are two people, uh, Alice and Bob, and then um, there is a location, which is a science fair in this case, which in this case is referring to the calendar event. So the event itself, the name of the event in this case is this one here. So um, that's why uh, here the science fair would be the, the name and then the date would be Friday, right? I mean, there's no specific date, just a weekday, but uh, this would be actually re referencing the date. And the goal is that the model is now giving us the result based on the sentence, could also be a longer text, but extract the information from the text and then put it exactly in a specific format. And that's the point, in a specific format, which can then be uh, used uh, for other uh, kinds of tools. For instance, entering the data into the database or sending this data to uh, some kind of API or anything like that. So um, now we have that and then we just send it here to the endpoint and then we get the result back. As you can see here, the event, completion choice is zero, dot message and then that it's called dot parsed. So uh, if you have worked with the API before, then it was always message.contents or maybe dot functions. If you call some functions, um, you have included function calls, but here it's dot parsed. And then we can just dump it into a dictionary. So because it's a pydantic, we really get a pydantic uh, model class from there back. So we can use model dump in order to convert it to a Python dictionary, right? And um, if we do this, let me just save it. <clears throat> okay. And now let's just execute this. So if I call, in this case, it's function and format.py, that's the name of my, in this case, uh, Python script. I can run this and show, show you the result. So let's execute this and then just wait a little bit. And here's the data, right? So you can see it's a structured format and that's the important point. Now it's a dictionary in here and you can see exactly the name of the event is science fair, the date is Friday and the participants is Alison Paul. And um, this uh, maybe doesn't uh, look like a big deal, but it is. Believe me, it is, because this allows us really to extract specific data from any kind of text in a structured way, and this will happen again and again, so each time it's deterministic, exactly in this format, and this, of course, allows us then to send this to, for instance, another kind of tool, like, as I said, and enter the data into database, anything like that. So with this structured format, there's, of course, it's less prone to error, because Otherwise, if you receive the data um, each time in a different format, then of course this will be very difficult to work with this later on. Of course, for us as humans, that's uh, totally easy, but if you want to have this automatic, really put in a system, for instance, this would be a real hassle. And with this specific output format, in exactly this structure, any time you send the data, and no matter what kind of uh, longer text you send here, of course, could be several persons involved, could be different kinds of, in this case, uh, locations, could be different kinds of dates, but you will also get, uh, always get exactly this format like name, this is the name of the location, the date, this is the date, and then participants, these are the participants. And this can be extracted and then of course posted or put into another system quite easily. So that's it for this video. So hopefully that was an interesting to you. As I said, feel free to try it out yourself. Go to the, the page itself. You can also play around with this code or you can try out different kinds of options here, create your own um, pydentic model because this is just an example. Of course, you can create any kind of base model and specify exactly what kind of outputs you want and then put it in here. And um, as far as I've read, that OpenAI claims that if you use their latest model, then this latest model is able to pick up your specific format 100% of the time. So um, that's a lot of at least what they claim. But as you've seen, um, I already tried it a few times as uh, well with the uh, 4.0 mini model, and it was also quite, quite really, really good. So just mention that. Okay, so that's it for this video. As I said, I hope you enjoyed it. If you do so, please give the video a like. Also, please subscribe to the channel. Thanks a lot. Take care, and then hopefully see you in the next video. Until then, best guys.